What's up? My name is Kevin King, and today I'm going to be talking about the musical term scale and how it applies to the piano. So specifically today, I'm going to be talking about a major scale. Now there are many different types of scales. It really depends on what key that you're playing in. So when we're talking about the framework of music, I'm talking about three terms that I'm playing around with. Key, scale, and chord. So if I'm playing in the key of D major, for example, I will be using the D major scale. If I am playing in the key of A major, I will be using the A major scale. So there are 12 notes in music. The scale will narrow it down to seven of those notes that we can play during that song, and then five notes that we don't play during that song. At the end of the day, all the scale really does on the piano is tell us which white keys we should be playing and which black keys we should be playing in a specific song. Now again, this is just when we're learning the framework of music. So there are minor scales, uh, major pentatonic scales, minor pentatonic scales, Dorian scales, Lydian scales, Phrygian scales, Locrian scales, Aeolian scales. But when you're starting out learning just the fundamentals of music and the framework, you need to start out with the major scale. One of the major reasons that we start with the major scale is because the piano is actually laid out like a major scale. In another video, I dove deep on the terms major and minor, and exactly what that means in music. Now as far as scales go, a major scale will typically sound more positive and a minor scale will typically sound more negative. I like to think of each song like playing a game and when I go into figuring out how to play that song, the first piece of information I want to know is what key is this song in. Once I know the key of the song, I then unlock the scale. For instance, if I'm playing in D major, I unlock that I'm using the D major scale. And then once I know the scale, I can also figure out the seven diatonic chords, which we are not going to get into today. So in order to figure out the scale for each key, all you have to do is apply the same pattern and formula starting on the name of the key. For example, if I'm playing in the key of B flat major, I start on the note B flat, I apply this formula and then I know all of the seven notes for that scale. I'm a very visual person, so I like to think of the major scale formula like a hopscotch pattern. If you think of a hopscotch when you were a kid growing up on the playground, your feet are either both on the ground or there's just one foot on the ground. So I like to think of it as a hopscotch pattern because it is binary. It's either two or it's one. Similarly, it's either a half step, which would be one, or a whole step, which would be two. That is how the pattern is laid out. So how we do this is we pick a starting note. For example, we will pick the note D, and then we will apply this hopscotch pattern until we get to the next D. In a previous video, I talked about thinking of each key as a set of distinct swimming pools. So if I'm playing in the key of D major, for example, um, I have a swimming pool from D to D. I have another pool from this D to this D. So each octave contains its own swimming pool. So we're going to take that same concept of having the discrete sections of the keyboard, and we're going to think about it as applying a hopscotch into that section. So if I'm playing in the key of D major, for example, I will apply a hopscotch here, one here, one here, one here, here, and here. So you can see how these different hopscotch patterns lay out on the keyboard. If I were playing in the key of A major, I would have a hopscotch pattern here, here, If I was playing in G flat major, I would have a hopscotch pattern here, 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 and here. So it doesn't matter which note you start on, you will always apply the same hopscotch pattern in order to make a major scale. Once we get into some more complicated and advanced techniques, we will definitely be breaking the rules of the major scale, but when we're just learning the fundamentals, it's really important to just hammer this idea in. So the actual pattern of a major scale is whole, whole, half, 
whole, 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 half. So one of the things that makes the piano such an easy instrument to learn is that the pattern of the major scale is actually laid out in front of you in the white keys. If we start on a C and we apply the hopscotch pattern, it will be whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So again, that is the space between the notes. If I were to apply that same pattern to the key of E major, for example, I start on the note E and I just apply the same hopscotch pattern. Start on E, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. It's the same exact hopscotch pattern as C major, uh, it's just starting on a different note. No matter which major key you're playing in, all you do is start on that note and apply the same formula every single time. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So by practicing scales, what you're really doing is learning how to walk around in each key and which seven notes you can play and which five notes you will not be playing in that key. If you'd like to take a deep dive on these topics, including piano technique and music theory, check out the King's Piano course. I'll put a link in the description. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Until next time, take care.